Hey everyone, in this video we'll see how you can cluster your DeepStream Enterprise nodes using Amazon Web Services. So as you can see in this diagram, we have an AWS auto scaling group and using DeepStream's AMI that you can find on AWS Marketplace, it is possible to automatically implement clustering for all of these DeepStream Enterprise nodes which belong to the same auto scaling group. And there are all kinds of benefits such as horizontal scaling and failover. And you don't have to any, uh, do anything manually. You just have to make sure that all of these nodes indeed belong to the same auto scaling group and DeepStream's AMI implements all of the clustering benefits by itself. And it is best to implement DeepStream's clustering behind a load balancer and multiple clients can then connect to either of these DeepStream nodes which are part of the DeepStream cluster. Now, DeepStream's enterprise also provides monitoring. For clustering, you can use DeepStream's monitoring services by default, or you can use some other third-party services. In this video, we use Logstash to monitor the cluster data. So as you can see, we have a Logstash instance attached to each one of the DeepStream nodes, which is part of this DeepStream cluster. And each of these instances push, it, push the cluster data into a database, which in this case is the InfluxDB. This InfluxDB in turn shows us the cluster data, uh, dynamically changing cluster data in the form of a Grafana dashboard, which is reproduced from a template provided by DeepStream as well. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to see your cluster data in a pretty looking dashboard, which looks something like this, where you can see the connections, the cluster size, CPU memory, messages, etc., for all of your server instances that are part of your auto scaling group, that is part of your DeepStream Enterprise cluster. So let's get started. I'm on the AWS console and we would initially add a policy and a row on IAM. So create policy. Name the policy. Add permissions. These permissions will be made available on the description of this video and create a role. And okay, we already created a policy, so we will choose that policy and name the role. We create row. Cool. So we start off with creating an auto scaling group. So go to EC2 and on the left panel, if you scroll down, you'll find auto scaling groups. So over here, we would say create auto scaling group. And since we don't have a launch configuration yet, we would create new launch configuration. Say next. And typically, you would find the DeepStream's AMI in the AWS Marketplace, but right now, I would uh, search for the AMI using an ID. Okay. So this is the AMI. I choose it. Micro. Go to next. And give the launch configuration a name. Okay, choose the role that you created and in advanced details, there's something called the user data. So what happens here is you need to add this user data in order to allow monitoring by third party services like Logstash. So by default, DeepStream uh, uses DeepMon for monitoring, but if you would like to use something like Logstash, you would need to enable uh, the HTTP in the config file of DeepStream. So that is what this script is doing. It uh, changes the enabled false to true. Also, since I'm using Logstash, which pulls the data from an influx DB, uh, I'm just using this script to enable the Logstash and giving it the influx DB URL and just restarting the Logstash. Cool. So we go to next, configure security group. And over here, we need to open up three different ports which are 6020, 8080, and 9089, each for WebSocket, HTTP, and clustering endpoints. So we come back here, 
first in TCP rule 6020 this is for web socket and 8080 this is for HTTP and 9089 this is for our cluster cool so we say review create launch configuration choose an existing key pair terraform and create launch configuration so after we have created the launch configuration we would create the auto scaling group so give it a name start let me start with two instances to begin with and select a sub network and that's it configure keep this group at its initial size okay and review create done so we have created the auto scaling group with a particular launch configuration using the dstream aml okay now if you go to the details of this auto scaling group and go to the instances tab you will see that there are two instances that are created and are part of this cluster or the auto scaling group now let's look at the grafana dashboard to look at how monitoring is done so if you see here we have two servers or two instances which we just created which are part of this group and this data is being pulled from an influx db which i showed you as part of user data while we were creating the launch configuration so if you select any one of these servers you would see that the data is being shown the memory of the server cpu the cluster size which is two this changes as we change the size of the cluster which we shall see in a bit and the messages okay so going back here to the details if we edit the auto scaling group and i say desired four minimum four maximum four so now i have four instances in the auto scaling group and i say save so now if you go back to the grafana monitoring and reload this page you should ideally see that the cluster size has increased from two to four and now we have four different instances which are part of this cluster now let's try to connect some clients to this cluster uh, each two different server instances and see if this uh, if these instances are connected to each other so here i have a small client js file uh, where one of the clients needs to be connected to one of the instances so we go back here to instances and we select one of these and we take the IP address from here and this IP address will use it to connect this client one and let's use a different instance for the client two so if I can go back to auto scaling groups BS enterprise instances and a different instance and the public IP address of this one would be my client 2 cool so I'm connecting the clients to deep stream and I'm logging in both the clients and one one of the clients is emitting an event continuously after every one second and the other client has subscribed to that event but is connected to a different server right so ideally uh, since the uh, these both are part of the same cluster this uh, client should be able to receive the updates made to this event let's see if that works okay and okay i would say node client.js let's see if that works yes so it is continuously emitting the data one of the clients is continuously emitting the data as you see and we are logging the data only in the other client which is subscribed to this event and this works perfectly fine cool Now if I go back to the Grafana dashboard and reload this page, 
So as you can see, the messages count has increased and it shows up in the messages section of this dashboard. And the CPU and memory data has changed as well. So this is how easily you can uh, monitor the cluster data of your DeepStream cluster. And this Grafana dashboard template is available in the description of this video. Okay, so you're all set to use clustering in DeepStream Enterprise. So in part two of this video, which is linked under this video, you will be able to see uh, the Logstash script, which we used in this video to uh, see monitoring for the cluster data. And also we'll see how you can use the template, Grafana template provided by DeepStream to monitor your own clusters data. So have a good one. Yeah.